<laughs> this film is essentially a 21st century musical reworking of the masterwork by Igor Stravinsky. The piece caused such a sensation over a hundred years ago when it was premiered and the audience was scandalized by a lot of the, the narrative and the dancing and, and the music. To us it only made sense to recapture some of that. This piece is all about breaking barriers. It's all about testing what reality is and even what art and meaning are. The piece was written on the eve of World War I, a time of tremendous turmoil and unrest. And Stravinsky channeled the tensions of that era into this remarkable piece of music. And what we've realized in playing this piece over the years and in creating this film is that we can relate so much to this music, even though it's over a century old, it's, it's still is so relevant in our day and age when unfortunately we still see so much confusion, warfare, violence, uh, corruption. And sometimes it takes a piece like the Rite of Spring and, and just art in general to make sense out of this utter chaos and confusion. It was really important for us to address the idea of sacrifice, sacrifice in a modern context, something that we and our audience could really relate to. The original ballet culminates in a young virgin who's sacrificing herself for the god of spring, and you can see that throughout the film as we are sacrificing our material selves. You can see us with masks and various layers, articles of clothing that we ultimately shed so that we can be cleansed and renewed. We live in a very saturated time. It's a very exciting time, but you know, we have technology and all these social networks and different ways of presenting who we are to, um, to society. And that involved the question of, do we use things to conceal who we really are because we're trying to present this version, this kind of Versus perfect the world, yeah, yeah. version that can really succeed in a societal context. <laughs> Throughout the film, masks take on a very significant role. So how many different masks do we have in there? We have our Venetian masks. <laughs> okay. It's our drama masks. It's our African masks. We had some party masks. That was perfect. Cool. And all of the masks were kind of representing our different identities or ways that we shield ourselves from the world. I think it's such a powerful image, this idea that it's not until we have gone through this journey that we're willing to release ourselves from this exterior shell and uh, become vulnerable. And it's an interesting thing to think about as performers too, because a lot of times we're taking on a theatrical persona depending on what we're trying to express in the music. And ultimately though, I think we're trying to find that deepest part of ourselves to share and to unveil. And what better piece than Stravinsky's Rite of Spring? It forces you to be so honest, and ultimately that's what happens to our characters. That mm -hmm. they, they get to this place where they have no choice, it's inevitable that they must reveal okay, their, right true, their true selves. Self. Or not. <laughs> In creating our music videos, Greg and I take on a multitasking role. We're known for these do-it-yourself type videos, and this project was certainly along those lines, it, and if anything, it upped the ante. We have a very specific vision, sometimes down to very minute details. We actually had over 50 pages of, of, of notes, of storyboarding and, and detailed exactly. concepts that we were almost foolishly planning to execute. The process of filming itself came with its own host of problems from having stuff in the background that we didn't want. Well, that globe is right in the shot. To having issues with focus, to having camera crew 
racing around us while we're playing. We're not merely playing the piano, but we're also directing, so we'll be barking orders as we're playing this very complex music to whoever's behind the camera. Blurry, blurry, blurry. Blurry. Get ready to pan away. Pan away now. We're going behind us, looking at our hands, just on the side. Definitely low is good. Anytime you see you know, just her fingers, and it's likely that I filmed it. Likewise, she filmed a lot of the close-ups on my hands. Ow, ow. Uh, but the, the process did come along with the joys and surprises. That moment when we found an awesome shot that was really exciting. Oh. That looked awesome. Oh my god, it's all really good. That's pretty crazy. Oh yeah, that's wonderful. Oh yes. <laughs> well, that looked awesome. Yes. So we had this organ from the 1870s. We found the organ online, created a really beautiful tone, but we had to pump the, the pedal. <laughs> While we were filming, we just didn't bother to pump the pedal. And so the organ just played soundlessly. There was no, there was noise. There was like it was kind tappy of the, tap. Yeah, the tappy tap thumbs yeah. of the keys going down, but there was no musical pitch. <laughs> uh, which sometimes was difficult for Liz and me, so we would actually just sing the music. All right. Welcome to Anderson and Rowe a cappella duo. <laughs> <laughs> we started talking about this piece and how we would represent some of its themes. There was this moment when we realized we were going to need to get naked, we were going to need to destroy the piano. The physical nudity is a representation of returning to that original state and awakening to the purest and wholest version of, of ourselves. We got to this place where you really lay yourself bare, literally, and um, have to open yourself to life. And it's symbolic that once we get to the end, it's a baptism mm -hmm. of water and fire. The top two scariest scenes to shoot, without a doubt, were the ones at the ocean, and at the desert. Uh, yeah, hands down. It's the sacrificial dance, and it's only fitting that we were culminating our video in, in such an extreme manner. For me, filming, the, uh, filming in the water was, was more terrifying than burning it. I almost didn't want to do this scene because I was so scared about what would happen in, in the end. Greg, and probably rightfully so. Well, and Greg got <laughs> injured, ironically. I did not predict that the waves would be so destructive. Okay, it's calm a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Stay down okay. in the next one. Go, go! Dip yeah. your hands, dip your hands. Another one, another one. A huge wave thrusts the organ directly into our feet. So hard that it actually ripped off completely yeah. your large toenail. My large tunnel was gone, like oh, gosh. that. It, it was freezing. freezing, so my <laughs> foot was already numb, so it just felt like I had stubbed my toe hard. And we were already rushing because we wanted to yes. get this done as soon as possible, so Greg was yelling, just, just keep just going! Keep going. Keep going. So we kept filming for another like 20 minutes after that. But when I got out of the water, my body started to regain its sense of feeling and it was it was criminally painful. I can attest to Greg's like screams later that night. It was so much <laughs> So here we have our organ. Looking a little worse for the wear. A little seaweed draping going on. Lots of sand. That was my foot. And plenty of crookedness. Believe it or not, this goes here. <laughs> this not gonna happen right now. And these are the stocks. Oh, we pulled out of the stocks. <laughs> 
because we had such limited opportunities to use the organ at the beach, you know, yeah. it's, there's only so much you can do. We also got some footage in swimming pools. We had uh, various tiny articles of clothing, making sure that uh, certain... We were completely exposed. <laughs> Is your sock still on? It's quite tight now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Playing on a burning organ was terrifying. The sacrificial dance has a lot of rest in it. It kind of like represents like the unease of the heartbeat. And the kind of breathlessness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you can even see that in our hands. We're like uh, moving our hands away from the lapping flames. In an ideal world, we would be using CGI, but apparently we're risk takers. We've actually caught the piano fire. Yeah, we have. It was actually really, really difficult to get that organ on fire. It was so violently windy. And In the end, we just had to throw a bunch of gasoline. I was the one woman amongst three men, and I, I swear, they were all pyros. And I was like, let's just do this as fast as possible. I think Cody just had one of the best exclamations of joy oh, when, like, I threw the gasoline it. on it. <laughs> Whoa! Throughout the film, there's a huge amount of symbolism, but one of the bigger were the four elements, earth, fire, water, and air. And you can see them throughout. In the air, you see the, the smoke, the, the feathers, and the leaves floating through the air, and the clouds. You see the earth as we're running over it, the landscapes, the desert, the millipedes. And then you see the flame, most dramatically in the very beginning and end, as we sacrificed the music, our clothing, our masks, the instrument itself, and of course the water. Right. As you see it in wine, and then the wine pouring over the instrument, but you see it in the ocean that we're running to and drowning in. And ultimately you experience the power of nature, and we're kind of constantly in awe, and you will see us making decisions, like are we against nature, are we a part of nature, is it something that's a part of us, and I think in the end we decide to merge with the elements. It was fun to explore different parts of the world. We're both outdoorsy people, but it was it was nice to have an excuse to get out. Sometimes we get stuck in the practice room so much. <laughs> apples conjured up the image of Adam and Eve. And how the apple is a symbol of both seduction and of knowledge. And so it kind of has this sinister and revelatory significance. And it happens at a place in the piece called the Kiss of the Earth. And after that, the Earth explodes to life. It's almost like Alice going through the looking glass. We've taken a bite of this apple and we suddenly see the world in a, a totally different explosive way and, and the music becomes very colorful as does the imagery at that point. Reality is already so skewed throughout the film. It begins at night and then shortly thereafter you see us opening our eyes. And at that point, are we opening our eyes to the world or are we opening our eyes to a dream? Mm -hmm. And we have another transition when we eat the apple. We're taken to yet another realm and then later in part two, nightfall happens and we go into the interior of the mind, the lights come out and we're in this very exotic, mystical place and what's reality, what isn't. I kind of like to think of it such that it's actually the very last note of the piece that we wake up to our true selves. We've been baptized by flame and fire and we've come to see the world in a very different way after the 33 minutes that preceded it. But you can interpret it however you want. That's actually why I love being a musician and being an artist and having the opportunity to ask these questions. I mean, these are existential issues and um, it just, it makes you look at the world around you in a new way and just makes you think about what is reality? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> These are our Adam and Eve apples. We bought about 20 apples and took one bite, dropped it on the ground, and shoot another take with a brand new, fresh, right. clean apple. So we had all these apples, and so we decided to give them to our helpful millipedes. Yes, they were very healthy family. millipedes. They were very healthy. Yeah.
toward the end of the film, you will see the emergence of millipedes from this ancient organ. And the millipedes and the organ itself are supposed to represent the decay and degeneration of not only um, the organ, but of the world around us. It's, it's all of our material possessions and the things that we identify with, they're crumbling. I'd have to say that shooting with those millipedes was by far the most disgusting part <laughs> of this filming experience for me. <laughs> it was pretty gross. Yeah. Ew. Get off of my fingers. <laughs> Ew. It was funny. Just like watching what they would do and me squealing. You know, Liz squealing. Oh, yeah. oh, no, no. Yeah. Wait. To the right. Yeah. Oh, he's still off the right. Nope. <laughs> uh, sorry. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we ordered these bugs online from a retailer in Florida and they were shipped to us overnight. And there were seven different varieties, all named by Elizabeth. Yes. In order to assuage my nerves, I gave them a little nickname. So instead of just millipede or scary insect, I called them Millie A, Millie B, Millie C. And so forth. Do we need Millie F, Millie G? Yes. But didn't you have a specific voice that you <laughs> use? He's like, I'm going on top of you. Which made it funny for me too. So I mean, eventually, yeah, that, I, helped, that helped calm yeah. everyone down. Yeah. I think the it's first time person. we put the millipede <laughs> on your arm, a it, little accident, let's just say. <laughs> Nature called at the wrong time. Who's <laughs> done <laughs> They don't oh, operate as you would like. <laughs> yeah. And you, you can't, can't tell them you what can't to talk do. To them. Millie A, why are you doing that? <laughs> oh yeah. There you go. You're loving the camera. <laughs> <laughs>piece is very time-based. The original begins with dawn and it concludes in the dead of the night during the sacrificial dance. And that sense of time was important to us. We, as individuals in the film, are trying to liberate ourselves from everything that is constricting us. Uh, and that certainly includes the element of time. Time can be such a limiting factor in our daily lives, rushing us along um, and distracting us often from what's important. And additionally, the piece is about spring. And there's something about this larger sense of time, you know, mm -hmm. the seasons and, and the cycles. shifting. Yeah, yeah. Some of my best moments in life, uh, or on, on the concert stage, have been when I've lost any sense of time. The world has just to become timeless and neither present nor past nor future. But it's really fascinating upon reading accounts of mystics and, you know, spiritual writing, whether they talk about this utter sense of, of oneness and timelessness, and that's something that. Um, perhaps we're trying to hint at. Throughout the video there are quite a few time-lapse sequences. Sunrise and the sunset, as well as clouds, shadows changing on buildings. Time-lapse is a bit frustrating. You get one shot, and if you know, the settings on the camera are wrong, too bad. So what Liz and I started doing is just taking our camera on tour with us everywhere we went. So we'd be in a hotel room, and we'd just aim the camera at the clouds. In addition to these time-lapse shots, we'd also get shots from moving vehicles. For six months, I'd always make you sit in the very back of the plane, <laughs> because the wing isn't in view, and so I'd be filming on all of these flights. And what's remarkable is Greg and I are usually quite sensitive to our surroundings. This really heightened our awareness. Oh, totally. Another effect that we were playing with was this slow motion illusion. So we'd play the music really twice, twice as fast. fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we would slow down the footage so that the music would realign, but our hands had this weird oozy effect. And it's interesting, depending on what you're playing, it just feels like a completely different piece. We would use it for these very slow and sinuous parts of the music, but when you speed it up, to, to <laughs> double tempo, it just sounds flippant. <laughs> we actually uh, performed the piece in its entirety not long after filming some of those scenes, and I remember our sense of tempo had just <laughs> been shot. <laughs> Filming in the desert, even though it was 
awesome. There were various frustrations, uh, just needing to go to the bathroom. That's right. Yeah, and <laughs> being hungry, parched, mm -hmm. hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was very important for us to capture the sunset on the desert as we were playing on the organ. We had one chance to get this shot. This Lo and behold, there were these flying objects. They weren't planes, <laughs> they were like man-powered helicopters, but they were so intrigued by us that they were flying immediately above us, and they were looking down on us, filming us. Footage. Yeah, but they didn't realize that they were destroying our African safari shot. We did manage to salvage like a tiny bit of the footage. a very dramatic procession of us in masks. We were trying to represent these warlords or gurus or some mysterious Elders. figures. However, to get this effect, we needed to walk nearly a mile. And we didn't realize that there would be all-terrain vehicles and cars <laughs> driving all around us. At first, we were really frustrated. But then later, we realized that when the cars drove, they created this dust storm that mm -hmm. gave it this million-dollar budget effect. It so. was pretty <laughs> awesome, yeah. So we just kept it all in. Hi, Cody. Hello. We employed hula hoops for these swirling, dizzying shots. And it was quite a challenge to hula hoop with this camera on the hoop because it kept, you know, kept bumping into my waist. But you were a fantastic hula hooper. As soon as I tried to do the hula hoop, however, it would spin and fall. <laughs> it was like one revolution on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> We laughed a lot while uh, filming some of the fight scenes, just because yes. they were, uh, to us, they felt really ridiculous. It's actually <laughs> funny, we don't fight and we don't argue per se, but for this video we wanted to illustrate the tensions. It needed to erupt at some point. We knew that the audio wasn't going to be used. We looked like we might be screaming at each other, but we were actually just laughing. <laughs> You're laughing. Because it's a sound motion. We're not used to fighting. <laughs> you're good, you're good. I think you looked actually like a much more natural fighter than me. I just oh. looked like I was a bit of a pansy. It was, it was very good fighting. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> we also decided to do an effect so that our shadows started battling one another. And we had two dancers who would choreograph fighting movements. So we use their shadows. What if it's, yeah, what if you're like yeah. monster playing? I'm playing the piano. <laughs> yeah. We got our Jackson Pollocks on oh. and we used paint for the end of the first half. In the dancing out of the earth, the earth is like exploding to life and so we wanted a physical manifestation of that. We have the papers flying, we have dancers all over the place, and paint is just erupting. We wanted the sense of color and vividness. We wanted to have this impassive expression as the paint was flying at us, and it was such a challenge because I didn't want to get the paint square <laughs> yeah. my eye, you know? Mm. Ooh, oh, please. Oh. oh Was also fun. We were like kids. I feel awesome. So in addition to throwing paint at each other, we also wanted to have paint on the keys and have this effect of paint coming from our fingers. So we decided to write out the music backwards so that we could film our fingers playing the music backwards. And then in the video editing stage we could reverse the footage so that the footage went backwards and so it looked as if the paint was coming off of the keys mm -hmm. rather than going onto the keys and getting smeared around. It was really, really challenging because playing the piano backwards is, is incredibly unnatural to begin with. Um, but also playing with paint on your fingertips because it's very slippery. Da -da -da -da. Oh, f I slid up. <laughs> <laughs> we had to wipe the keys clean between every take so that it would look pristine and then mess it up again. It's a theme of the Rite of Spring video. It was frustrating and really annoying to film, but it turned out great visually. <laughs> 
the black light bubbles. It looked awesome. Yeah. When we added the chemicals to the bubbles, they didn't blow the same way normal bubbles do. <laughs> so it took a good like half hour to perfect the bubble blowing technique. <laughs> <laughs> But our assistant, Caitlin, yeah. became an expert she was a wizard. Light, bubble blower. Yes. We thought it would be really awesome to have our fingertips lit by LEDs. Then we learned about raving gloves and decided to get some. We didn't realize how uncomfortable it would be to play with the black light gloves because we weren't just waving our hands around. <laughs> um, we had to literally play Stravinsky's Ride of Spring. It was really easy to miss notes. Filming with the Christmas lights was deeply frustrating to get everything lit just so. So Wally, my cat, loved the LED lights. Wow. Some cool stuff. He loved the Christmas lights. He really, for some reason, loved the piano hammers. Wow, Wally, Perfect Wally. cat toy. Oh my god, that was... Okay, Wally, do... Oh. We wanted a lot of atmosphere while we were playing, so we would use smoke. We had a fog machine. Actually, we had two fog machines. Sometimes it would just like billow so much that it would set off the alarms. Yes, fire alarms. And I feel like fire the alarms, whole neighborhood would probably heard. We had a lot of wine in some of the shots as we're exploring our unconscious selves. What was really fun about these scenes is we just actually would drink the wine. <laughs> oh my god. But Filming it can be really stressful. Yeah. And uh, especially for me, I get like a little, little timeline, I have it all organized, what we're going to film. And Liz is more patient, kind of go with the flow. So you didn't need the wine as desperately as no, I did. but it was a party. Cheers. <laughs> It's great because I can laugh at Don't go on my Looking great. I, just, I think oh, we've probably got enough. Okay. We wanted a beautiful image of leaves floating through the air. We collected two trash bags full of leaves, and my husband poured the leaves out of the window. We had leaf shards in our hair, and actually, I laughed many times. I think I ruined many shots. <laughs> Sorry. But it's a, it's a bit of an homage to one of my favorite music videos, The Scientist by Coldplay. I love the leaf blower, it makes Liz's hair look so awesome. We're doing extreme hairography with this I already, leaf blower. I've been told in concert that my bangs move around a lot, but this time <laughs> it was to the max because we have this thing blasting at me and it's very uncomfortable, it looks really cool, but yeah. it's just the full force of air at my face as I'm trying to play very difficult music and also not look pained. <laughs> oh my god. And sometimes we'd have a volunteer lie on the ground in a very uncomfortable position so that it would angle upright and hit your hair as radically as possible. Yeah. For the first scene we shot with the leaf blower, we were with a piano that was really, really dusty. Oh. So we shot the leaf blower straight into it. It was terrifying how much dust like erupted out of this piano. It looked incredible, it looked but so cool. I'm just so glad that it wasn't in your eyes. I'm rolling. <laughs> Uh, one of my favorite shoots uh, was was with the dancers. Yeah, more extended. It really felt as if we were getting to the heart of the piece. You know, it's a ballet, and just incorporating the element of dance and finding that connection also with our dancing arms and hands is is very moving. There were several piano students in addition to several professional dancers, and they had so much joy and. Uh, excitement about the project and that certainly translated to the to the shoot. It made a difference for us to have that sort of energy after we had been working on the project for so long. I mean, generally everyone who was involved gave us such support and it, it meant the world to us. And it's been one of the most life-changing and um, 
transformative experiences. We've made so many incredible discoveries. We've grown closer as a team, um, as artists and as filmmakers, and it really expanded our view of what's possible through filmmaking and um, through music. Bye. Bye. <laughs> This is like, welcome to our makeup show. So I'm using Hello. a Shuamura. How are you? Eyelash curler. <laughs> Shuamura. And I have Chanel lash. I have multiple personality disorder and I'm just going to flip between accents like this. <laughs> oh yeah, because this is... Steam. What do you call three. those plants over there? They're pussy with us. <laughs> <Ew. laughs> sounds so bad from your mouth. <laughs> well, you can't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was too exaggerated. Okay, sorry. I was like, yay, it's the word. All right. <laughs>